Hi, I'm Larry Becker, and today I'm going to walk you through the basics of a couple of amazing full-frame mirrorless cameras from Sony, the a7R2 and the a7S II. Now, these cameras both do such an exceptional job with video, we've created a separate part that details specific video differences, as well as a third part that quickly sums up this part and the part two on video, both of which you can check out as well. For now, let's talk photography. When it comes to still shooting, there are a few major differences, beginning with the full frame sensor's 12.2 megapixel image capture, instead of that 42 megapixel size. The image processor is the same, and they both have the same five frames a second burst rate, but the higher megapixel A7R2 is only rated to capture about 22 images at that five frames a second, while the A7S II is rated to capture as many as 200 frames. The five axis image stabilization and electronic viewfinders are the same, but the focus system has 169 contrast detection points. While the A7S II isn't slow at focusing, it's not nearly as fast as the A7R2. One last consideration that's a difference between these two cameras is the high ISO of 409,600 on the A7S II. That's an amazing low light capability, and it could be exactly what you need if you shoot in low light. For still shooters, the standout areas of contrast between these two cameras fall into four key areas. Low light sensitivity, the focus systems, a little difference in burst capture capability, and of course resolution. The A7R2 has a high ISO of 25,600 or 102,400 extended. The A7S II has an extended ISO up to 409,600, and they both have a low ISO of 100, which can be extended down to 50. So I went into a room with really low light where I could barely even see the colors, and both of these cameras captured surprisingly good low light images. As you would expect, the A7S II did better as I cranked up the ISO. But here are some of the nuances that I noticed. The A7R2 seemed to have slightly richer and more accurate color across the frame in normal light and up to ISO 12,800. Then above 25,600, the A7R2 seemed to have some areas of color that were slightly inaccurate. As far as image noise goes, looking at these images at 100%, which is what most of us only do during editing, I noticed that the noise seemed pretty similar through 6400 ISO. At 12,800 and above, the A7S II was cleaner, with less noise. Everybody has different tolerances for image noise, and of course, your subject can influence how much noise you're willing to tolerate, but in general, for the sake of comparison, I'd call the images from the A7R2 tolerable up to 12,800, and my similar cutoff for the A7S II would be around 51,200. Of course, even a grainy image is better than no image at all, so having even higher ISOs might save you in some really dark situations. Now, all that ISO comparison information is accurate if you look at the 12.2 megapixel image at 100%, and the 42 megapixel image at 100%. But since the A7R2 has the advantage of a much higher resolution sensor, there's a curveball. What if you scale that 42 megapixel A7R2 image down to a 12.2 megapixel file size? Opening images captured at the same ISO in Photoshop, I scaled down the larger ones to the 12.2 megapixel size, and then I compared them and I found that in terms of noise, they were comparable up to 51,200. So with no scaling, they're similar up to 6,400. But resizing gets you similar low light performance up to ISO 51,200. That's three more stops of low light performance. These two cameras have different focusing systems with the A7S II sporting respectable 169 contrast detect autofocus points as compared to the A7R2's 399 phase detect and 25 contrast detect autofocus points. While the difference in specs sounds dramatic, I didn't notice a big difference in focusing speed or accuracy indoors in moderate to low light. But step outside or flip on some good indoor or studio lighting and there's a big difference. The A7S II 
maintains a respectably quick focusing speed, and while I'm sure it's technically quicker than in low light, it did so well in low light that the brighter light focusing seemed just about exactly the same. On the other hand, in bright studio lights or outside in sunshine, the speed and accuracy of the A7R2 autofocus was borderline magical. It was really, really fast and accurate, and it was hard to get it to focus hunt at all. Just a half press and beep. When it comes to burst capture, both rigs can fire the shutter at 5 frames a second, but because the file sizes are so different, the total number of images that will fit into the buffer is quite different. In my testing, the burst speed I got with both cameras was consistent with the quoted spec of 5 frames a second. Then, checking on what it takes to fill the buffer, I set both cameras to save extra fine JPEG images in their largest size. Then I shot bursts. The A7R2 did a little better than the stated spec and I got 24 full-size frames before shooting slowed down. On the A7S II, I got a little less than the stated spec when I captured 64 full-frame images before the shutter slowed down. So now it's time for image quality. These are full-frame cameras and I was using Sony Zeiss Glass. So I was shooting images of everyday things like a plant or something sitting in my office and those images were just gorgeous. The color accuracy and sharpness across the frame was great with both bodies. The shadow detail was impressive and the dynamic range was great too. I feel like the A7R2 seemed to have a little richer color in some test images, but I think these differences are so slight that they don't even translate to a video review like this. So looking at images side by side in this review will probably have you saying Larry's crazy. The color depth in both images is identical. But for pure resolution for large prints and fine detail, even when you crop in your image, the A7R2 is the clear winner. The details are clear and crisp at 100% and you should never minimize the importance of cropping during post-processing. For me, sure, composition happens while I'm shooting, but better, more thoughtful composition happens at my computer and I can crop in and recenter my images and when I'm done, I can print posters. If my end product is for the web, I can crop into a fraction of the frame. And in fact, the A7R2 has so much resolution that when cropped to APS-C mode, it still has more megapixels than the A7S2 in full frame mode. Having 42 megapixels will get you thinking upside down too, and here's what I mean. My 55mm f1.8 Prime can impersonate a zoom lens because I can crop in on wildlife that's taking up only a portion of the image area. Like we were talking about earlier when I said that scaling low light images can improve your low light noise by around three stops, all that extra resolution can turn a prime into a zoom lens during post processing. 42 megapixels will get you thinking differently. So photographers, you can see that these two cameras are impressive performers, and there's a bit more performance overlap than you might think when you pit a 42 megapixel sensor against a 12.2 megapixel sensor. For large prints, it's the A7R2 hands down. And if you don't expect to need especially large detailed prints, you might choose the A7S II for the low light and burst capture capacity. In many cases, I would think that the benefits of the A7R2 outweigh the shortcomings for most still shooters, since the pluses are big and the negatives are relatively small. Then again, that's strictly a judgment call for still photographers. Of course, if any part of your purchase decision hinges on video performance, you'll definitely want to watch our A7R2 versus A7S2 video performance comparison. Video could very well change what I recommend to my friends. For B&H and Kelby One, I'm Larry Becker. Thanks for watching. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, B&H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.